Today, I want to talk just for a few minutes about praying for revelation. Amen. We need revelation of the Word of God. We need revelation of the Word of God. Amen. So, and I know you won't remember everything that, that, that I ministered today, but if just a couple of nuggets of truth that will help you to, uh, to get a deeper revelation as we read the Word of God, as we study the Word of God, we need to ask God, God, what does that mean to me individually? Amen. So that, like Pastor Ron was saying, we're not just coming to church, but we are the church. Amen. We are the church. We want to be the church. And we want to do things that are pleasing to God. So anyhow, I pray that this message blesses you today. But anyhow, the Apostle Paul was a great man of God. He was a great man of God, chosen by God to help us to understand how to get revelation from the Word of God. Amen? Paul, Paul condensed some of his preaching from Romans, covering different things like salvation, covering things like the life of faith, covering things like growing in faith, conquering the flesh in Romans chapter 5, verse 7, and walking in the Spirit in Romans chapter 8, and his concern for Israel in Romans chapter 9, and how the church was grafted in while, uh, in, in while the branch of Israel had been cut off in, in uh, Romans chapter 11, and finally, the dedication of our bodies in Romans chapter 12 uh, into a brief prayer. Now, in chapter after chapter of Romans, Paul teaches these great truths, and he wraps it up with a short prayer. His prayer may have been short, but it was very powerful, amen? Very, very powerful was the Apostle Paul. Jesus also sh uh, prayed short, powerful prayers. In John chapter 11, verses 41 to 43, it says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they might believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Amen. We can call forth dead people in Jesus' name. Amen. Eh? Because we can do the works of Jesus. Now, the Apostle Paul wants us to be established in the faith, okay? He wants us to be established in the faith, and that's why the Lord gave him this, this, uh, this book of Romans to write to us as believers. In Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27, it says this, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, key on that word mystery, but now he has made manifest and by prophetic scriptures has been known to all nations according to the commandments of the everlasting God for the obedience to faith to God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Now, the real theme of this particular prayer is the mystery. It's the mystery, okay? Paul pray, Paul's prayer was for the, faint, for the saints at Rome to understand the revelation of the mystery. Paul typically refers to the gospel as the gospel, but in this particular verse, he says he calls it my gospel because he had a revelation that he taught in the New Testament far beyond any other believers that understood or taught at that particular time. Peter and John taught some on the mystery, but Paul had a revelation of the mystery unlike any other saints at that time. He had a revelation on this thing called the mystery. You cannot be stabilized or established in this Christian life if you don't understand the teaching of the Apostle Paul. You have to understand the teaching of the Apostle Paul. In verse 25, he says, Now to him, God the Father, who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. So this mystery was kept secret since the world began, but he's revealing to us through the Apostle Paul. To be, to be stabilized in your faith, in your faith, this verse is saying we need the gospel given to Paul by the Holy Spirit and the preaching of Jesus Christ and an understanding of the revelation of the mystery. God alone has the power to establish us. 
Paul said, my gospel is necessary, but only God can establish us. God is the only one that can establish us in our faith. Amen? We cannot stabilize ourselves. You can't get it from a DVD. Teachings cannot stabilize us. Books cannot stabilize us. Sermons from a church cannot stabilize us. However, if we act on the word as we know God has the power to stabilize us, he has the power to stabilize us. Just as we cannot save ourselves or heal ourselves, only God can establish us in our walk with him. Only God, amen? Only God. Now, what is the mystery that we're talking about here today? What is the mystery? The word mystery is found in this passage of Scripture, actually the second time that Paul mentions, uh, mentions the word in the book of Romans. He also mentioned it in Romans chapter 11, but the first recorded reference to mystery was actually found in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11, when the disciples asked Jesus why he taught in parables. They asked him, why do you teach in parables? And Jesus replied, he says, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but then it has also been given. So Jesus gave them seven parables called the kingdom parables, and he said through them he would teach the mystery of the kingdom, but in addition to this, the first mention of the word mystery was by, was by Jesus, and it's found many times throughout the New Testament, especially in the writings of the Apostle Paul, because the Lord gave him revelation knowledge of this thing called the mystery. And we need revelation knowledge of this thing called the mystery if we're going to fulfill God's plans and purpose for our lives. Now, the English word for mystery is, called, is a transliteration of the Greek. And since, uh, since writers didn't know the meaning uh, of the Greek word uh, mysterion, they created a word in English called mystery, okay? They create a word called mystery. Similarly, the Greek's uh, word for uh, apot. Apostolus was translated to the uh, English word apostle. That's where it gets, comes from the Greek, the word apostle. Baptizo was translated to the English, the word baptize through the meaning of the Greek word, which was originally known, was unknown. And by the end of the New Testament times, scholars discovered the meaning through the archaeological finds. And they were comparing scripture with scripture. And they discovered that the word meant to dip. The word meant to dip, okay? In Revelation 19, it says, Jesus returned with vestures dipped in blood. The Greek word for dipped is baptizo, okay? So that's where we get this, this thing about baptizing by immersion, okay? By immersion. You don't sprinkle people. When you bury somebody, you don't lay them on the ground and sprinkle dirt on top of them. No, you bury them, okay? So, so when people are baptized, we are immersed in water, okay? So... The Apostle Paul wants us to understand that. Now, in studying the history of this, this word, musterion, you'll discover that the, the origin of this word was long before even the Greeks, in it, even like 1600 B.C., okay? And there were fraternities, fraternities that existed during those times. Now, they have fraternities today. Aaron was in a fraternity, and it was terrible, bless God. But, but anyhow, they had fraternities in those those. Those, those days, okay? And uh, in fact, one of the fraternities existed at the time of Daniel until, the, until, the, uh, until the, uh, the time of the New Testament. The wise men from the east, mentioned in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, were a part of this fraternity. Those wise men studied astrology to learn the will of God, and through their study of the stars, they discovered the location and the time of Jesus' birth. Today, we find God's will by the Holy Spirit and not astrology. But he used astrology for these fraternities of, of wise men to find Jesus, okay? So God painted a redemptive story in the stars. He did that, okay? So that's how they found Jesus. Now, again, the men who formed these groups were called fraternities, and only the members of that fraternity had access to these teachings. These teachings were called a mystery, they were called a mystery. And to learn of the, uh, the, the fraternity's teaching or mystery, it required that the individual had become a member of that fraternity. You had to become a member of that fraternity. Now, the particular word mystery 
was taken from its original use in ancient times and was applied to the New Testament. Often when we see the word mystery, we think, well, it's a secret. We're not supposed to know the meaning. However, the word mystery in the New Testament does not mean secret. It means something. It means things hidden in the Old Testament which are going to be revealed in the New Testament. Things in the Old Testament will be revealed in the New Testament. Or something has been revealed that has been secret from the ages that it began. So today we understand things that Isaiah never understood. Today we understand things that, the, that Isaiah the prophet wrote down. He was inspired by the Holy Ghost, but he had no idea what he was writing, okay? But we're going we're gonna to understand that today. It is the word, it was a mystery to him, okay? It was a mystery to him in the Old Testament. Again, in Romans chapter 16, verse 25, it says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. So the Greek word for world is aeon, where the English word eon originates. The literal meaning of the word is ages, okay? It, it means ages. So since the beginning of all the ages, God kept something secret in his heart. He kept something secret in his heart. He didn't reveal the secret to David. He didn't reveal it to Moses. He didn't reveal it to Jeremiah. He didn't reveal it to the minor prophets or the, or the major prophets of the Old Testament. However, God introduced the mystery with one man, and his name was Jesus. And you can find that in, in Matthew 13, 11. We already referenced that earlier. But the moment that Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father and the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, the mystery began to be released. God used Paul to reveal the mystery. Paul said, if you really want to be stabilized in the days in which we are living, you need to hear my gospel. Then God can begin to stabilize your life. We need to understand the mysteries in the New Testament. We need to understand them. We have to understand them, okay? And we have to be established in this present truth of the Word of God that's found in the New Testament. The Old Testament is wonderful, but you can never become stabilized if you only read and study the Old Testament. The Old Testament was, must be studied and understood in the light of the New Testament. The Old Testament needs to be studied in light of the New Testament, okay? The Apostle Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, it says, For this reason I will not be negligent and remind you always of these things, though you though you know, even though you've heard it before and are established in this present truth. So Peter said, I'm going to teach you these things over and over again. He wants to teach us these things over and over again. Repetition so that it finally gets into our spirit. Peter was saying, you cannot be established without understanding this present truth. And the present truth was a truth being written during the time of Peter was preaching, and this present truth was the writings of the New Testament epistles. And this is where the meat of the Word of God is at, in the New Testament epistles. That's why Pastor Ron teaches us every Wednesday night, okay? This is where the meat of the Word of God is at, in Acts and in Romans and 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and every epistle through the first three uh, chapters of the book of Revelation. These are the books and the teaching of our dispensation for our time, this is the church age that we're living in, and this is a teaching for us as believers, okay? It's through meditating and study the books that spiritual maturity is, is produced. So as you come on Wednesday nights, we're teaching, Pastor Ron is teaching on this, and this is where spiritual maturity takes place. And that's one of the reasons that God put us on this earth, okay? Not just to read a few books out of Reader's Digest or whatever, but he wants us to become mature. And the way you become mature is by studying these epistles and finding out what the mystery really is. We're living in a day of the full outpouring of the revelation of the mysteries of God. Nothing has been held back or kept secret in the heart of God. The mystery, the hidden wisdom of God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, and the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. During the Old Testament, 
times, angels, the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and Jesus Christ taught the word to the prophets and the priests in the Old Testament. However, only the Godhead knew of and understood the mystery. Only the Godhead during this time understood the mystery. Angels didn't know it. Demons didn't know it. Even Satan himself was completely unaware of this mystery. Believers, as believers, we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of you, okay? And since the creation of man, no believer has ever had been indwelled by the Holy Spirit. No longer was he confined to a physical building. So it's not confined to a physical building like the Old Testament, okay? No longer was the Shekinah glory hover, hovering over the mercy seat in the tabernacle. Now born again believers are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the living God resides on the inside of each one of us. And he wants to give you the mysteries, amen, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, even here this morning. Now, following the day of Pentecost, immediately there was 120 people were born again, spirit-filled believers doing signs and wonders and miracles that Pastor Ron's been teaching about. 120, they began doing, they began doing those signs and wonders and miracles. They were speaking in tongues, professing the word of God, and preaching the message of salvation to others. Paul had a road to a Damascus experience. He went to Arabia for a few years. He lived in a cave for a while. And God gave Paul revelation and understanding of the truth that were only seen in, in the shadow in the form of the Old Testament. I believe after the day of Pentecost, demons had come out of retirement because instead of all the demons chasing one man, now they were chasing hundreds of people, okay? They're chasing you and me now, amen? After that, okay, they were chasing people who had found Jesus and made him Lord and Savior of their life. By the end of the day of Pentecost were the original 120, and it increased by 3,000. It went to 3,120. Three days later, it went to 8,120 converts. Finally, by the time of Acts chapter 6, great multitudes were added to the church every day as converts went out and preached the gospel. They went out and preached the gospel, and that's what we should be doing. Now, part of the mystery includes the individual priesthood of every believer, something that never happened in the Old Testament. We are kings and priests made to rule and reign. That's what, that's what the apostle Peter said. Kings and priests made to rule and to reign, okay? That's what he's called us to do. So part of the, uh, the mystery includes the individual priesthood of every believer, something that only happened in the Old Testament. The tribe of Levi was de uh, designated as the priesthood. To approach God, believers were required to go to the priest. Thank God you don't have to go to the priest any longer, Amen. However, God's desire was for every believer to become a priest. So every person in here is a priest, amen? Peter teaches us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a unique people that we should show forth the praises of God. We should show forth the praises of God. Although the Holy Spirit came on certain individuals in the Old Testament, Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and he will abide in you forever, forever and ever. Old Testament saints only experienced the Holy Spirit coming upon them and then departing, okay? They came up on, then he departed, okay? But the church did not begin until Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, seated in heaven, and he becomes the head of the church. And since that time, the church has been... The church has been built every day. Jesus said, I will build my church. And the church did not exist in the Old Testament. The body of Christ did not exist in the Old Testament. The bride of Christ did not exist in the Old Testament. But God gave us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need to search after those gifts. Amen. We need to desire the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. And begin to operate in them, okay? We need to begin to operate in them. All of us do, okay? So we, 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 thank, we thank God that there's, again, there are certain instances in the Old Testament where individuals could operate in the gifts of the Spirit. But in the New Testament, the gifts of the Spirit are given to every man. And that's the word that we got this morning from Pastor Ron. Every man and woman to profit with all for everyone. It belongs to everybody. Now, Gentiles are a part of the church. One of the mysteries is that the Gentiles 
are in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were isolated incidents of Gentile believers in the Old Testament, but the Old Testament was primarily written by Jewish people. Pastor Ron covered that on a Wednesday night. It was written by Jewish people. In fact, the opening of the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 1, let's see, verses 1 and 2, it says this. It says, God, who in various times, in various ways, spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets and has these last days spoken by his son, whom he appointed there all things through whom he made the world. The fathers were the, the, fathers were the Jews and us are the Gentiles. In this scripture, the fathers were the Jews and the us is Gentiles. That's us. Okay, right here. Okay. Again, the Old Testament was primarily written uh, to the Jewish people. But the Gentiles have become a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. The church is primarily compi comprised of Gentile believers today. Thank God that we also we have Jewish believers in the church. But the gospel is definitely for both Jews and Gentiles. But the emphasis has changed from the focus on the Jews to the Gentiles during the church age. So when Jesus went to heaven, the Jewish people had their chance to propagate the gospel. They didn't do it. So God gave it to us, amen? He gave it to us. So we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he gave us a job to do. So the gospel is definitely, again, for the, both the Jews and the Gentiles. So anyhow, God has given us the gospel. He's been given to the Gentiles. And we're to evangelize the world, including the Jewish nation itself. But God gave Paul a revelation of this transition. God gave the Apostle Paul revelation of this transition right here in, 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 in the Word of God, and which is a part of this mystery. Now, remember, we're talking about a mystery this morning about revelation knowledge. But anyhow, Paul prayed this prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. He says, my prayer for you is that you'll understand the revelation of the mystery and you can understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other nations are not made known to the sons of men, but is now revealed to the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That's in Ephesians 3, 4, and 5, paraphrased. The purpose is that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. Amen. Ephesians 3, 6. Now, the apostle Peter and Paul and John and James were raised up to bring revelation of the mystery to the body of Christ. That's why these men were raised up. He wants us to understand what this mystery is, all right? Through the writings of the New Testament, you and I can become stronger in this special time period that we live in called the church age. The church age is now until we're, we're raptured out of here, amen? This is the church age. It's the time of the Gentile. So we got a job to do, okay? Now, through the writings of the New Testament, you and I can become stronger in this special time period that we live in called the church age. The mystery began on the day of Pentecost and it will end when the church is raptured. Whether that's pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, it will be revealed, you know, wherever you stand in your eschatology, amen, there it is. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye at the last trump of God. I remember Barbara's dad telling me a story one time when he was a boy. This was in the 30s. He said they knew that the pastor was going to be preaching on, on, uh, on the rapture that morning. So these kids, they get up in the, in the uh, rafters of the church, okay? And when he, when he read the scripture, he read the scripture right here. And he says, and he says but I tell you a mystery. When we, when we, we all shall not all sleep but we would be changed in a moment in a twinkling of eye at the last trump. When he said trump, they blew that trumpet. <laughs> he said the, the church cleared out, man. <laughs> oh, man, Jesus is coming back, man. <laughs> I'll never forget him telling me that story, man. He said everybody ran out of the church. Bless God. But anyhow, the Old Testament teaches us of the return of the Lord to set up his millennial kingdom here upon the earth. The New Testament epistles teaches us about the rapture of the church when all born-again believers will be, be, be removed from the earth, okay? Now, there are types and shadows of the rapture that are found in the Old Testament. Lot was removed from Sodom and Gomorrah. Enoch was suddenly taken off the earth. However, when the Old Testament speaks 
of the return of Jesus, it's not referring to the rapture. It's referring to Jesus' returning to the earth for his millennial reign. That's what it's talking about, okay? Now, Israel was blind, okay? Israel was, was, was blind. And uh, part of the mystery is, was the, is the hardness of Israel during the church age. And some Jewish people just don't believe it, okay? So they're blinded to the things of the gospel. That's why it says in, uh, in Romans eleven twenty five, 25, it says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be, should be wise in your own opinion, but the blindness is part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles had come. So now notice that he didn't say they were blind completely. He said they were blind in part. This does not mean it's impossible for the Jewish person to receive salvation. It just means it's more difficult for them to get saved. It's more difficult for them to get saved. So anyhow, the death of Jesus Christ. There are a number of events that are not included in the mystery. Now listen to this. There's a number of events that are not included in the mystery. The first is the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 53 and Psalms 22, and other passages go on to detail about the death of Jesus Christ, including the fact that he would be nailed to a cross or pierced, okay? But at the ascension of Jesus Christ, another part that is not a part of the mystery. In Psalms 110 verse uh, 1, it says, The Lord God the Father said, my Lord, Jesus Christ, set up my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Notice this verse is not speaking about the ascension of Jesus Christ. It refers to establishing of the kingdom here upon the earth. Now, the establishment of his kingdom on the earth is not a part of the mystery, okay? The first and second coming of Jesus uh, that was combined in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And we, we read this at Christmas time a lot. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government which is upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there is no end. This verse combined with both the first and the second coming of Jesus, there is no mention of the church. Why? Because to Isaiah... The church was a mystery. The church was a mystery. He didn't know anything about it. He had no revelation or understanding about the church. Now, the tribulation is another event that is not a part of the mystery and will be documented throughout the Old Testament. The millennium at the, uh, and the eternal state following the millennium was also described in the Old Testament. In, but in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, For this reason I, Paul, prisoner of Jesus Christ for the Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which has been given to me for you. Now, the dispensation of the grace of God is the church age. It is a dispensation which we're living in right now. And the apostle Paul continues, says, which was given to me for you. It was given to him for us, okay, for us. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 to 6, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, in other words, the Old Testament, and has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. So the purpose of the mystery is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. And to make all see what the fellowship or dispensation of the mystery, which was beginning of the ages, has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ Jesus, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Right. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, explains the purpose of the mystery. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church and to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. The word now is referring to the church age, the age that we're living in right now. It's true that God left the church here on the earth to be a witness. yes. Is it true that God left the church here on the earth to mature? The answer is yes. 
But another reason God left the church on the earth is because God's wisdom is now made known to Satan. The principalities and powers through the church, God just points to the church and says, there's my wisdom. There's my wisdom. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's my wisdom. Amen. And he has given us authority. He has given us authority. And you won't hear this priest everywhere you go. Believe me, you will not, okay? Thank God he's given us revelation. What is the wisdom of God? That God would put his spirit into humans. You may be born again, but we still have the nature of the flesh. Jesus didn't have the nature of the flesh. We still have sins and shortcomings. This is the manifold wisdom of God that Satan now must look upon these fallen beings, which is us, still living in a fallen, death-doomed body where God has placed his spirit on the inside of us. The manifold wisdom of God is when this death-doomed body is filled with the Holy Spirit, raises his hand and proclaims, in Jesus' name, and all hell must come to a screeching halt because of the authority of the name of Jesus. It must come to a screeching halt because of the authority of the name of Jesus. Before Jesus left, he gave authority to us. He says in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. God in his infinite wisdom did not give us a resurrected body the moment that we got born again. We didn't get a resurrected body the time that we were, when we were born again. God is waiting a couple of thousand years from that time of Jesus' death and resurrection to give us resurrection bodies. So you got one coming if you're born again. Amen. But until then, during the church age right now, born-again people in normal, natural, death-doomed bodies have authority over Satan and his demons, sin, sickness, poverty, and lack. God simply sits back with his arms folded, and he said, and he looks at the devil in the eye, and he asks, how about that wisdom? How about that wisdom? The whole body of Christ got the wisdom of God. Amen? Now, the ministry of angels also changed. God did not reveal the mystery to the devil or, or even his own angels. In fact, on the day of Pentecost, the entire ministry of angels changed. Until that day, the angels took their orders directly from God. In Psalms 103, verses 20 and 21, it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. When Jesus arose and sat at the right hand of the Father on the day of Pentecost and had arrived, all the angels looked around and asked, Now, what do we do, Jesus? He responded, Well, now you are ministering servants sent to minister for them who are heirs of salvation. Those angels belong to us. Give them an assignment, amen. Give them an assignment. They changed their course when, when, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, amen. They now have a good ass, a, a assignment for us. They used to work for God. Now they work for us. So put them, put them to work. Bless God. But Hebrews 1.14, in the, in the Old Testament, it says angels, in, in angels, it says angels were taught the word. In the New Testament, angels listened to the word from redeemed human beings. They listen to the word from redeemed human beings. That's you and I. Peter says, angels desire to look into the things that we look into, but they can't understand it. In 1 Peter 1, chapter 12, or 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, it says, To them it is revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they are ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. So angels do not understand the mystery because they have not been redeemed. We have been redeemed, okay? They do not understand it. They do not understand redemption. The day of Pentecost took angels by complete surprise. They didn't know it was coming because it was a part of the mystery. On the day of Pentecost, 120 people walked out of that upper room. Wow, we're in a whole dispensation now, a whole new dispensation. We need some writings. That's what they were saying. We need some writings. We need some teachings for this dispensation. And who did, and beside the apostles, God chose the apostle Paul to write the truth of the word of God, to explain the mysteries that were hidden since the beginning of time. Paul had a burden. 
In Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 and 25, he says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and filled up in my flesh what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I become minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. He called the Apostle Paul to help fulfill the word of God for us. Not only was the mystery a great revelation to Paul, it was a burden for him to carry it through his entire life. Notice what he says in verse 25 as he's speaking to the church, of which, of which uh, refers to the church spoken in the previous verse and his ministry to the church. Literally, he says, Paul is saying, for the sake of the church, I am made a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me to fulfill the word of God. The Greek word fulfill is plero, and it means to fill a deficiency. There was a deficiency, and God called Paul to fill that deficiency. He called the apostle Paul to fulfill the deficiency was, that was in the word of God. Moses wrote Exodus and Genesis and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. He also wrote some Psalms and Joshua and, and the major and minor prophets. And the, and the poetic books by David and Solomon were kept adding to the Old Testament until its completion. Then Mark, then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote their books. Finally, Paul was on the scene. And he said, a deficiency still exists in the completion of the Word of God, and God has called me to fill that deficiency. He called the Apostle Paul to fill that deficiency that was in the Word of God. Paul went through much in his lifetime. He said, I've been beaten, shipwrecked, in prison, fasted off, in perils, in desert, perils of the storm, in perils of the Gentile, perils of my own countrymen. And besides that, he says, I have to care for the churches, which including all the bickering that goes on and the pastors that I have to keep straightening them out, okay? He said, I get the church straightened out and five months later, they're back in it again. He said, I have to go back and write a letter to them. Care of all the churches would be challenging for him. Then God gave him an assignment to complete the Bible. He wanted him to complete the Bible, to show us the mystery. Without the writing of the Apostle Paul, you cannot be stable, mature, and established in the things of God. That's why Wednesday nights are so important. Okay, here. An understanding of the mysteries of the Word of God as revealed through Paul's writings is a necessity. It's necessary. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, we're almost finished. It says, The mystery which has been hidden from the ages, from the generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. It is no longer Christ in a physical temple or a tabernacle. No longer is it Christ in a pillar uh, by day or a pillar of fire by night. Today, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Romans, again, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27, as we complete. It says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now has been made manifest by the prophetic to all nations according to the commandments of the everlasting God for the obedience to faith. To God alone wise be glory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, what is the difference between the Old Testament and those in the New Testament? He lives in you and me. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Now,